What's up guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and here I have the DJI Phantom 4. Let's get to my review. Let's first talk about what I love about this new drone. First of all, it comes in this new foam packaging, which is really nice. If you don't wanna buy a separate case for it, you really don't have to anymore because everything for the drone that you need can fit inside here. It comes with a little latch that isn't super secure. I, I think you probably could shake it and open it. And so you might wanna add some extra strap to it if you're gonna be traveling or flying with it or whatever. But the fact that this is included for free, it's pretty awesome. Inside here, you will see the drone itself. And what's cool about this drone is it is a totally new shape, uh, which is, I think, much cooler looking than the older versions. It also has a totally different shaped battery, which gives you 25% more flight time. I'm not sure exactly how true that is because I'm the type of person that always brings the drone home when there's like 33% battery left. I'd rather be safe than sorry. But I have noticed there is a pretty significant bump in uh, flight time when it comes to these batteries, which is really nice. So you'll have to buy less of the batteries. Something else that I absolutely love about this drone is it comes with this little holder for the camera. If you've ever used any of the other DJI Phantoms, when you put it in the box, the gimbal just kind of bangs around as you travel around. You can actually hear it as you're walking around with it. This holds everything totally stationary. I don't know if it was bad for the gimbal before, I never had one break, but now I just feel like this is much safer than any of the previous versions. The propellers themselves, they now attach in a new way. I'm not sure if it's really better or worse, but it might be considered a little bit more easy. There are gray and black propellers and you just match the color and they just twist one time and lock in and then to unlock them, you just press them down, twist them the other direction. So I'm not totally sure that this is a huge upgrade from the old uh, spinner propellers, but it might be a little bit faster to get them on and off. Let's get the controller out here. You'll notice that the controller itself feels a lot more robust than previous versions of the controller. I have a uh, iPhone or iPad cable attached to it here uh, so that I can view uh, what the camera sees in my uh, phone or my tablet. Uh, but this controller just feels much better. It feels heavier. Everything feels a little bit more professional about this controller than the previous version. So I do really appreciate that. Now, when it comes to the camera itself, from what I've read online, I believe the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 3 have the exact same sensor. I've also read that the lens is supposed to be a little bit better on the Phantom 4. I'm not that big of a pixel peeper myself, and I can't really tell that big of a difference from the footage from the Phantom 3 to the Phantom 4. However, I have noticed that when you compare the footage from the Phantom to the GoPro, it seems like if you're shooting uh, footage of something that's moving a lot, like water, you can really see the low bit rate come into play with this camera, especially if you're shooting in 4K. Everything becomes pretty pixelated, and I would say in some cases the footage is actually unusable because the bit rate is so low. But for your average drone shooting, this camera is pretty amazing, and for the price, you can't beat it. I've actually used all of the Phantoms before and I've used the Inspire one. So I have a pretty good idea of how the previous drones actually handle in the air and what they're capable of doing. And what I noticed right out of the box with this thing is it seemed significantly slower than my other uh, Phantoms that I've used before. And I thought that was a little strange because I thought it was supposed to be more powerful. Uh, what I ended up learning was when you have that front facing uh, object sensor on so that it won't run into things, it significantly limits the speed of the drone. The other thing that I've realized is that it also doesn't let you do a lot of the moves that I like to do. Sometimes I like to fly really close to the ground or I like to fly really close to a tree or a structure or a person. And this drone, when that is enabled, simply will not allow you to do it. The other thing that I like to do is I like to launch this from my hand and I like to land it in my hand. So usually I will fly a drone towards me and just reach up and grab it. If I'm near water or the ground's uneven, I don't wanna land it on the ground. Again, if you have that forward facing obstacle camera turned on, it's not gonna let you do that. The only way for you to do it is to spin it around, fly it towards yourself backward, and then you can actually catch it. So I have found that the feature that I was most excited about this obstacle sensor, I don't even use it. I turn it off 100% of the time because I want full control over the way this thing flies and I don't wanna be limited to where it can go or how quick it can go. When you turn the obstacle sensor off, 
or put it into sport mode, whatever it's called. This thing is so fast now. I believe I read that it can go something like 45 miles an hour, which is horrifyingly fast, especially if you're flying it near people. But it just opens up so many possibilities. Let's say you wanna do a follow shot of a car. You could shoot a car going 45 miles an hour and keep up with that car. Or more importantly, if it's really windy outside, this drone is going to be able to handle itself a lot better. If there's 20 or 30 mile an hour winds, it's going to be able to crab into the wind and hold itself where an older, uh, more weak powered drone will just drift away in the wind. I took this drone with us to Los Angeles and Hawaii. We're filming a new tutorial with Mike Kelly on architectural photography. I use this in a range of different situations and I use it in a bunch of extremely windy situations in like Beverly Hills and Hollywood. And then when we went to Hawaii, we were up on these mountains and uh, the wind was whipping so fast and I can't believe this drone handled itself perfectly. It would just crab into the wind so hard, but it would just sit there. And of course it has GPS, it has downward facing cameras now so it can actually see what's below it. And uh, it knew exactly where it was and it stayed right there, even in extremely high wind. So I was very impressed with the way it performed. One other huge advantage of this drone over some of the previous ones is the noise level. The, uh, the actual noise that these propellers make, actually I can turn it on and let's listen to this. So I'm gonna turn this on real quick just so you can listen to how quiet these motors are um, on this drone. I'm not gonna put the props on. The props going through the wind are actually the loudest part. But listen to this. All right, so it's on right now. It's like idling. Let's turn up the power. It just, it sounds like the future. It's, <laughs> listen to that. It's great. It's like it's like a Star Wars movie or something. But the point is, is this is amazingly quiet. Obviously, once you put the props on there, it gets a good bit louder. And of course, you're not going to sneak up on anybody. It's not silent. But comparing this to the Phantom 3, it is significantly more quiet. There are a bunch of new features with this drone that I haven't had a lot of time to play with. There are these follow features, so you can actually like pick something on the screen, on the iPad or the phone and say, follow this. And if it was a car or a bicyclist, the drone itself will lock onto it and follow that person. Like I said, I haven't really worked through that very much, but I have found every time I've tried something like that, I personally always prefer just to do it manually. I'm used to the Phantom 2 with the GoPro on it without the vision. So I was doing everything just by the feel of it and looking up in the sky and guessing how far away I was and guessing what tilt I should put on the camera. But now that you can actually see in HD what you're doing, I don't feel like there's really as big of a need for all of these automatic features because you can actually see what you're doing and you can control it. And I find that I can do it manually a lot more smoothly than the computer does. When I've done some of the stuff where it like pivots around a single point before, uh, this was with the Phantom 3, but it was very robotic and you'd see it just kind of turning as it went. I can do it myself and make it a really smooth motion. And I do those moves all the time. If you saw any of the stuff that we did in Iceland with Elia, um, I'm constantly doing these like arc motions. All of that's done manually and uh, I don't really have a need for the automatic settings. But keep in mind, those are some benefits of the Phantom 4 over the Phantom 3 as well. Now, my biggest issue with the Phantom 4 is the fact that it has this weird descending problem. And I can't quite figure out why it does it, but if I go forward at top speed and then I just let off the throttle, it'll again crab back and then, and then sit perfectly stationary, it will just start lowering itself. And sometimes it descends like four or five feet and I cannot figure out why it does that. And then it'll stop. And normally, you know, that wouldn't be a problem at all, but I tend to fly these things in like the weirdest situations. I'm flying it over somebody's head or I'm flying it over water or in Hawaii, we're flying it over lava and stuff. And you can't just not know what the drone's about to do. It looks like it's trying to land itself sometimes in water, which is really, really scary. So I've just learned that every time I go forward and then stop, I need to give it some uh, elevation so that it starts rising back up so that it won't land itself or hit something down below. Again, I cannot figure out why it does this. Um, I've tried to read about it online. I can't find anything about it, but this is an issue with this drone that I never had with any of the previous Phantoms. 
One other big upgrade of the Phantom 4 is that it has the, the downward facing cameras or radar or whatever it's called. And this allows you to use this drone indoors. Basically when you're indoors, it's not able to connect to satellites to do the GPS location. So it will drift around, which is really scary. So we were just in Hawaii with Mike Kelly filming this uh, hotel shoot that he was doing. And uh, because I had the Phantom 4 and it has these, you know, downward facing cameras, I was able to fly this in this big conference room and it worked great, surprisingly. I mean, it, it just looks down, it can lock onto the ground and the tables and the chairs that were down there. And I was flying it just as fast inside as I was able to do outside. So you're probably asking yourself, should I buy the Phantom 4 or should I save a little bit of money and buy the Phantom 3? And the truth is, you know, the Phantom 4, aside from the strange descending thing that it does, uh, it's better in every single way than the Phantom 3. However, it's not that much better for the majority of things that I do. You know, obviously the fact that it won't run into a wall, if that's important to you and you're gonna use that feature, then maybe that's worth the extra few hundred bucks for this drone. But for me personally, I'm not blown away by the difference of the Phantom 4 over the Phantom 3. I would be very happy to shoot with the Phantom 3. I would also be very happy to use the Phantom 3 professionally. I think the video footage that you're gonna get out of the Phantom 3 is very comparable to the Phantom 4. So it's, it's close, you know? If you want something that's gonna hold its value a little bit more, I bet the Phantom 4 probably will hold its value a little bit more just because it's newer technology. But if you're the type of person that's looking to save a few bucks and you know you don't need all of the most cutting edge technology, the Phantom 3 is pretty amazing on its own. And if you're gonna be using it outside in everyday situations, you're going to get almost identical looking footage. Hopefully you've enjoyed this quick review of the Phantom 4. Head over to fstoppers.com to see daily free content like this every single day and head over to fstoppers.com store to see our premium photography tutorials.